Today we're gonna to talk about Portra as we know it today has been around since 2010, but its lineage traces back over 70 years to the release of Kodak Ektacolor in 1949. After the Ektacolors came the Varicolors, and after the Varicolors came the first Portras, NC, VC, and 100T. At that time in the late 90s, most photographers were still printing their images in the darkroom. So the ability to choose between NC's low to moderate contrast and VC's punchier colors was extremely valuable. However, as photography entered the era of digital, editing on a computer began to overshadow printing in a darkroom, and Kodak no longer saw a need to have variations of the same stock in different saturations and contrasts. Having already discontinued Portra 100T in 2010, they discontinued NC and VC and gave us the reincarnated Portra line we have today. There are many factors I see that contribute to Portra's popularity. Perhaps the most obvious is the beautiful way it renders imagery. It lends itself perfectly to the soft pastel aesthetic that often lures people towards film photography in the first place. The soft look isn't for everyone though, and some criticize Portra for not looking vintage and gritty enough. But honestly, that's never what it was designed for. Portra, like Pro 400H, which we discussed in the last installment of this series, is a professional film stock. In the era of digital, that means that it's been formulated to render imagery with low, soft contrast, accurate skin tones, and exceptional exposure latitude. This natural flatness makes it extremely versatile when scanning and gives the photographer the most latitude in post to tweak the images to their liking. The skin tone accuracy makes it great for shooting portraits, and the exposure latitude makes it extremely forgiving when photographing scenes with high dynamic range or exceedingly bright highlights. This combination of attributes allows it to excel at capturing seemingly anything and empowers the photographer with the peace of mind of knowing that the image was captured on portrait. Because of all things, that's what I look to portrait for the most, reliability. Once you gain enough experience shooting it, you gain a strong feel for the way a scene is going to render when shot on it. It becomes predictable, but not in a boring way, in a I can consistently expect exceptional results out of this film stock kind of way. Portrait scans come back with its signature charming warmth that's baked subtly into each image. And in my experience, 
all my images that I didn't butcher personally come back with a certain organic brilliance. Charming, yet versatile and extremely forgiving. And I think that's why portraits become the C41 favorite. Flexible and reliable enough for virtually any scene, and aesthetically unparalleled beyond words. That, and the fact that it's the only stock of its kind that remains. fresh aroma of rotten eggs. Yep, that's right. We're here in Mammoth at a spot called Hot Creek. If you've ever been on Instagram, if you've ever had a phone, if you have eyes, if you like photography, you've probably seen photos of this place. It's called Hot Creek because it's obviously hot, hence the sulfury smell. There's some sort of geothermal activity going on here. I'm not gonna pretend like I have any idea what's actually happening here. I have no idea. I'm just here because it's pretty and I'm on my last frame. So let's fix that. Don't judge my 645 film back loading skills. I'm new at this whole thing. Normally I'm extremely respectful of fences and barbed wire and stuff like that, but I'm only going right here. I just want the fence out of my shot. I gotta do a hat change. Not for fashion purposes, but because the wind keeps blowing it off my head. much more stable. So as much as I love Hot Creek and I would be perfectly content to sit here and shoot it for the rest of the day, we must move on to greener pastures. And I think I mean that literally. Yeah, that's good. Isn't it neat how, because I'm wearing a lavalier, you can still hear me from all the way over there? And isn't it also neat that I'm going to shoot the exact same angle where you are right now? Maybe not. Didn't believe me, did you? Ha ha! Uh, I gotta meter it first. So I think I want to get a shot of the van on the bridge. I'm not sure if I want to shoot from this side of the river or that side of the river because 
it looks like from that side, the mountains might line up a little bit better. So let's find out. Definitely this side. So I'm gonna get my camera all tripoded and set up so that once the van is in position, I don't have to do any framing or anything. All I have to do is press the shutter button just in case I'm blocking the bridge, even though there's, I haven't seen another person in the last hour. Okay, camera's all set up. I'm gonna go move the van. She looks beautiful, but she's slightly further forward than I wanted her. Okay, let me just make sure that my metering is sound, just in case the light has changed. To be honest, it's kind of weird making this series and to, within two episodes, have already covered the last two professional C41 options available, and one of them is now discontinued. Sure, there are still plenty of great consumer stocks that I'm happy to put in a point and shoot or shoot in 35mm, but for those of us who take our photography a little bit more seriously, Portrait is kind of our last saving grace, the last of a dying breed. It's a bit of a sobering thought when looking back at the myriad options once available. But in light of the recent price hikes, shortages, discontinuations, all of that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful Kodak has kept this film alive, and I'm grateful that they're still here, making an effort to maintain and expand upon the options available to us as film photographers. Sure, it costs an arm and a leg right now, and sure, Portra's our last real option in this category. But you know what? It's still here, ready to help us capture our lives and execute on our ideas. Believe me, I'm all for options and variety, but of all the options that could have been the last one standing, I'm glad it's Portra because even if I had other options, it would still probably be my first choice. Only time will tell how the next few years is gonna go for analog photography. I'm hoping that the endangered species of professional C41 options makes a comeback, but for now, I'm grateful that our only option is also, in my eyes, the best option we've ever had. So thanks Kodak. You package this stuff in gold for a reason. Did you see it? The big no-no that I made in this video? If you did, you're very keen. If you didn't, well, then sweet. Basically what happened is, you know, when I was shooting in Mammoth, you know, the second half of the video, there would be a video clip of me framing up the shot and then I would go and I would take the photo, but the sky would jump. Subtle enough, right? But if you noticed it, well, then this is what happened. Basically, I'm shooting on a new camera right now. I'm a Mi 7 is in the shop has been for a long time. So I picked up a Mamiya 645, which I'm not super used to yet. And I accidentally left the dark slide in the back of the camera while I was shooting this video. 
So while I was in Mammoth shooting all those photos, they all came out black. I literally had to go back and reshoot the photos at the same time of day on a similar looking day. Yeah, not great. Uh, so word from the unwise, if you're shooting on a new camera, make sure to pull the dark slide and make just while you're at it, double check that all your dials and knobs are where they need to be. In Mammoth, whenever I show the camera close up, you can literally see the dark slide in between the film and the shutter. So yeah, I, I don't even know. I was so frustrated when I found that out. So mistakes can happen to anyone. Clearly they happen to me. I'm very good at making them on camera. Uh, so yeah, the more you know. Uh, this video was made possible in part by generous contributions from the community on Patreon. So if you're a patron, thank you so much for supporting. And if you're not a patron, but you would like to support this series or any of the work I do on this channel, there's a link down in the description of this video. But that's all I've got. Thank you guys so much for supporting, so much for watching. I'll see you next time, which will be in two weeks. I am making a commitment to not be super slow at making things anymore. So, all right, enough lab. I'll see you guys in two weeks. <laughs>